Hello everybody, I am Mickey, I am not your mama's minister, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite films, The Skeleton Key. Now, it is one of my favorite films of that genre, but it is still one of my favorite films. I know that it was criticized for uh, technical aspects and even the storyline in um, by some, some film critics, however, I really like, one of the things that I love about my field of expertise, of, of spirituality, is the vast diversity. There are so many different, not even, I'm not even talking about uh, necessarily religion or even spiritual paths, but mystical paths. Oh my goodness, it doesn't matter where you look, uh, who you talk to, somebody has a different ritual or rite or spell or mojo or working or anything else that um that is is native to them their culture their background their family and i really love uh getting to witness those even if i don't incorporate them into my own mystical practices i like being able to to see them and see how they're done now in 2000 the gift had come out and uh, I think it was Kate Blanchett in that lead role and that was set in Georgia and so you kind of just a little bit kind of saw the lifestyle and you got to see a fortune teller um, who was working out of her home which is very common not just in the south but in various areas and so you, you kind of got a little bit of sprinkling of that but it wasn't until the skeleton key in 2005 that you got a deeper look into and hoodoo is not a religion and it is not the same thing as voodoo which is a relig uh, religion now you can practice voodoo and practice hoodoo at the same time but you can also practice christianity and hoodoo you can also be a mormon and do hoodoo so it do really doesn't matter because hoodoo is a mystical practice it is uh spell work and ritual work and so forth that is incorporates a number of different traditions and it was put together it is a very american tradition it was put together kind of with the margin by the marginalized communities of the united states and so you had the slaves and the natives and then the mormons um and then you also had the amish you had these different groups that came together kind of to practice mystical uh, practices that they brought over from their culture that they brought over from their uh, family lineage and so hoodoo is a wonderful wonderful melting pot of magical practices and magical rites and sigils and symbols and so forth and fantastic and so you kind of got a little bit of a, a taste of that in the skeleton key uh, to the to, down to the uh, possum penis bones that are hanging as a wind chime on the front porch of a of, I think it's a gas station and so I really like that touch because um, raccoon and possum penis bones are worn by certain people in that practice hoodoo often or there are other there are some religions that also do it but so they will wear um, those penis bones as good luck as fertility as um love spells so yeah people will wear them people will hang them in their doorways and so i really loved seeing that touch and then you go to the extreme of the film which is of course the end ritual which is taking over somebody else's body and um i know that some of the complaints were I've never heard of that ritual in hoodoo and the same argument that I had to that argument was that just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean that it isn't a practice um, Starbucks has a secret menu so <laughs> it doesn't it's not really that far-fetched to believe that s certain uh, mystical practitioners or mystical practitioners in groups um are keeping some of that information private one of the one of the reasons that i don't buy other uh 
practitioners books other than Judica Illis um, compilations is because they're writing from their own information and they're not going to include something that they know um, is specifically theirs and they've put it together for a specific purpose and so they're not probably not going to share that and so people who say oh well this this woman published her book of shadows she probably didn't publish her book of shadows she probably pu published what information was already out there with her spin on it and if you pull out a lot of the different books let's say for example um, love spells if you pull out all of the different authors and practitioners uh, books about love and how to use mystical work in your in your love life you will see a kind of like a a regular base mojo and then the difference is the writing style and that is usually what you're running into when you um, prefer for example Scott Cunningham or if you prefer um, whoever else and so I um, it it didn't it didn't bother me that this extreme extreme ritual um, this very dangerous ritual was something that that was in there because it still was a supposed to be a spooky movie or supposed to be a horror film but um, which I don't I don't think that it ended up being but because I wasn't scared and I like I've said before I don't like horror films and so anyway um but it's I really love the touches that it has of the realistic nature um I thought it was funny I know that there were some people who were offended by it but I thought it was funny that the um the the villains in the film talked about the that the wife had wanted a black girl because she was born black she herself was born black and she's had to get white women to go into their bodies um, throughout the years and so she really wanted a black woman um, to be in possession of and her husband says to her you know that the black women are superstitious and they never stay and I really thought that was funny and I didn't think it was offensive at all because it does tend to be that if you look at the cultures uh, those of us who don't come from an Anglo culture are more inclined to superstitions that have been passed down through generations and generations and generations and yes if you look at some of the other Anglo cultures that are not from the US yes there's those superstitions and um, like we were talking about the southern area there are a lot of superstitions that are native to the southern region but you don't really get a lot of that in the north or on the west coast or anything like that that's not to say that it doesn't happen but that kind of generalization I thought was very appropriate for the film um, and uh, let me see what else um, I really just loved it there there were a few things that I didn't like um, of course I did not like that there was the idea of if you don't believe in it then it can't hurt you that really bothered me but I understand that um, that's a common belief and so it wasn't like it was oh my gosh I can't believe they said that it's just one of those things that I really wish they would stop uh, uh, continuing that that lie that it can't hurt you if you if you don't believe in it and then I think that the other thing was oh my goodness I absolutely loved when um, the wife walks up to the girl to the nurse and says um, I'll bet you have a ton of markings I'll bet your body is all marked up and I thought that, that was hysterical just because of course I am all marked up and scarred up and so forth and so I'm betting that I probably don't have to worry about somebody wanting to possess my my body um, and then I think that uh, just the the regional um, dialects were awesome I thought that they were a, a lot of fun um, nobody sounded like 
in my opinion, and I'm not a voice coach or accent coach or anything like that, but in my opinion, I really felt like that was similar to what you hear when you're in that uh, area of Louisiana. Um, I loved that the people in the area knew of Papa Justify, and um, it was kind of legendary, but kind of also superstition, kind of, yes, we know that this exists, and so you kind of had this, you know, and that is really how legends start, isn't it? And then, and rumors, and all of that other stuff, it is one of the things that we love about gossip, is it's always bigger than the truth. And so that is one of the things that powers, and if you talk to most root doctors um, about the practice of hoodoo, they will t talk openly about public curses and public um, uh, workings against people, because what happens when the other person knows that you did a curse on them? That feeds, it feeds fuel to the fire, so to speak. And so I really love that Papa Justify had, and I think it's Mama Cecile, um, had created this huge, huge legend that carried down through generations and generations and generations. Um, and I really love that. So yeah, I think that speaking from a mystical practitioner, I like the diversity that the films show, just like I like it about books, but I like that it is showing a diversity of practice because practices are different wherever we go. And so I really loved that. Um, I really loved that it kind of showed more of a mystical practice rather than anything having to do with any deity or anything like that. That's always gonna be something that I look for because I like when they leave out the religious aspects or the spiritual aspects and keep it more mystical um, because then you kind of get to see that it doesn't matter who you fucking worship as long as you're still practicing and kind of making the world a better place. Granted, the husband and wife were not make necessarily making the world a better place. They were just not wanting to die. But how many people would sit there and say, yeah, I would totally do that. I would totally possess somebody else's, somebody younger if uh, I didn't have to have, you know, whatever physical ailments or if I didn't have to have wrinkles or if I could sing again or if I could do it all over again. There are so many reasons that people would love to relive their childhood or their youth and the idea of instead of going back in your own body um, as a young person but being able to choose the body that you're going to possess, the life that you're going to possess because there are very few people out there that don't have a circle of friends or family co-workers and so you're basically having to fit into that life. Um, it appeared in the movie that the couple just continued to live in that house and be kind of eccentric people, but that's less realistic than somebody taking over somebody else's life, having to learn how to be a nurse, having to learn how to be a caregiver, you know, which is exactly what the, the wife would have to do if she had to live in Caroline's um, body and take over her life and have it be believable. Um, oh yeah, I'm still Caroline. So yeah, as for that, I thought that it was a fun movie. I liked it and coming from a, um, spiritual practitioner, a mystical practitioner, I absolutely enjoyed the, the magical aspects of it. Pardon me. And so, um, yeah, so that's it, and feel free to disagree or agree or give your thoughts on it, um, and yeah, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, and next time we will be talking about the movie that I mentioned earlier, 2010's The Gift. All right, talk to you soon.